Hey guys, Modeling Weekly here. In this video, I'll be bringing you my next round of tips and tricks to improve your modeling game, this time with super glue being the subject. I've had loads of people asking questions over the years regarding the use of CA glue for photo etched parts, as well as other modeling applications, so I thought it would be a good idea to create a somewhat all encompassing video guide on the topic. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Before the video starts, I'd just like to quickly say a huge thanks to all my channel members here on YouTube. Your support is absolutely invaluable and helps to maintain the channel to a huge extent. Thank you all so much yet again. If you'd like to find out more about what being a channel member entails, feel free to click the join button down below to discover the different levels starting at $1.99 a month. Anyway, let's get straight into the video. First and foremost, I highly recommend getting your hands on some good products. Off-brand CA can be perfectly fine, but there's a certain element of reliability that comes with some slightly more expensive branded alternatives. My personal favourite is the rubber-infused black CA from VMS. The black pigmentation provided by the rubber particulates not only improves the flexibility of the glue, reducing its brittle nature, but it also clearly shows where on the model's surface the glue has been placed. This is immensely useful when it comes to removing excess glue with debonder, as you can immediately see if any glue is left and where it's located. When it comes to actually applying the glue, there's a few steps that can be taken to improve and ease the process. The first would be to create an array of custom applicators for different situations. Never apply the glue straight from the bottle or built-in applicator. I personally alternate between a fine sewing needle a bent piece of rigid wire, and a toothpick. The only thing to bear in mind with the toothpick is that it will initially soak up the glue, so allowing that initial layer to dry before using it as an applicator is highly recommended. Another useful tool to have is a wax pencil, which is invaluable when dealing with parts on the smaller side of things. If you don't want to invest in a wax pencil, then a very cheap alternative would be to roll a tiny ball of blue tack onto the end of a toothpick, then stretch it down. This creates a very thin, slightly sticky film of blue tack on the very tip, as shown in the video. In addition to a range of suitable applicators, I'd also recommend getting your hands on some greaseproof paper, tracing paper, or essentially anything that has been designed to be greaseproof to any level. This will serve as the surface onto which you can squeeze some glue out and then dip your previously mentioned applicators into. The nature of greaseproof paper will help to slightly elongate the working time of the glue as it will prevent an immediate bond forming with the paper. Once you have all the necessary tools and accessories ready, it's time to get gluing. Try to apply as little glue as possible whilst still maintaining a sufficient joint strength between the parts. This will minimize the cleanup required after the glue is set. In the large majority of cases, you'll want to apply the glue onto the model instead of directly onto the photo etched part, as this will help in locating them in exactly the right position. Simply apply the glue in the precise location on the model and use that as a guide for applying the photo etched part. This is a critical order of events when the PE part is too small to have glue applied onto itself first, such as guards on tank headlights. Once the part is in place, isopropyl alcohol can be surprisingly helpful. IPA acts as a catalyst for cyanacrylate, so by applying a tiny amount to the setting part, it can massively help in accelerating the time it takes to fully cure. This trick comes into its own when the joint is especially fragile and doesn't have the strength to remain in the correct position with a longer drying time. When the IPA is applied, you'll notice that the glue pretty rapidly turns white along with the immediate surrounding areas. This is nothing to worry about and is completely normal. It's a sign that the catalyst is working. Essentially, monomers in the CA glue are binding with molecules in the IPA which then evaporate and rapidly condense on the surface of the glue and immediate surrounding area. 
This white patina can be very easily removed with some water on a cotton bud or more IPA once the glue is set. My final tip for when it comes to using CA glue combined with photo etch parts will be to purchase a debonder, which I briefly mentioned earlier. This comes into its own once the glue is cured and fully hardened. The application process involves applying a decent amount to the troublesome area and letting it soak for a couple of minutes. Then an old brush can be used to work away at the excess glue until it comes away from the surface of the model, leaving behind only the glue holding the part in place. Debonder can also be useful in removing glue stains from your hands, or if you accidentally glued a couple of fingers together. We've all done it at some point. My personal recommendation would be VMS Glue Remove, as it works pretty nicely for a larger range of different manufacturers of glue. However, other options such as Z7 Debonder from Zap do work as well, albeit with a little extra soaking time involved. Before I go, I have a bonus tip for you guys. CA glue can be a very handy filling medium for smaller gaps and seam lines on your models. Simply apply an appropriate amount to the troublesome area with one of the previously mentioned tools and let it dry fully. IPA can again be used to accelerate this process. Then once dry, it can be sanded away just like normal filler. The big advantage that comes with it is that unlike normal model filler, CA glue doesn't shrink over time, so those seam lines aren't making a reappearance anytime soon. So that pretty much sums up all the tips I have on offer when it comes to CA glue and modeling. I really hope that you found this video somewhat helpful and that you've been able to take something useful away from it regardless of your skill level. Make sure to comment your favourite tip down below, I'll be interested in hearing your feedback. Many thanks again to all the Modeling Weekly channel members, as well as those subscribed to the MW Basic membership. You're all equally invaluable. Thank you all so much for watching, I really hope to see you all here next time, and that you enjoyed the video. Bye!